Howdy Red Legs fans and welcome to our exciting grand final edition of Red Legs TV for 2012 and today we have some super guests and uh, none other than the legendary Stephen Rowe and Andrew Newton Jarman. It's fantastic to have you guys here today and boys very exciting in the lead up to the grand final against Westies on Saturday. How are you feeling Rowe? Are you excited? Look I am. I think all they've got to do is play like they did in the second semi. Um, West Adelaide have got to improve. They've got to improve by eight goals. So it'd be great for them to win a flag, wouldn't it? Our first since 97. We can't be the last premiership. Boys, can we, JC? Well, we, we've enjoyed the last 15 years, Jar. So what do you think? It's been 97. It was a, it was a memorable moment for yourself. Very much a, a year of uh, redemption for yourself as a footballer in South Australia. You um, you certainly you won the McGarry and certainly led the way. Macca was the spiritual leader, but I'm certain, I was, I was, as a young player, I was fairly certain you were one of his le 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 lieutenants in charge on that day. Oh, we had a wonderful team back in 97, obviously picking up Jimmy West to uh, give us that key forward. I just want to say something to you. What are the glasses for? Do you think you're Robert De Niro? He's turned on me already, Jason. You know, uh, he looks like a... No, it's that, no, no, that guy, that Korean guy. Yeah. <laughs> Put him back on and you could, do, you could do it. Do an impersonation of that oh, Korean oh, guy. How does it go? I'm getting old. No, how, how does it go? What's that? The Korean guy. Yeah, he Put him back on and do yeah. the... The dance. The, yeah, the num Num Cha. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can't do it. Yeah, where do you think all you right, are? All right, all right, all right. People want to see your yeah, eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Look, yeah. JC, 97 uh, was a wonderful uh, year for the, uh, the Norwood Footy Club, but uh, it's uh, it's going to be very important for the guys on Saturday because they need to create their own um, culture and a dynasty. And as you know, when you win a premiership, that's 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 you know we've got that bond forever, that brotherhood in 1997. And it'll be great to see our guys on Sunday do the same. Now, uh, boys, uh, you know, fantastic memories. Um, none other, Rowie, than the Screamer. We oh, have to talk about it. Gee. He's in the dying moments of the, la of the last quarter. We're up by, what was it, 70 points? Yeah. I've had my 35th yeah. kick. Yeah. Uh, and I put it up for you. <laughs> Can you just talk us through it again? Well, well, the truth is, about two days ago, my son was just fishing around on the SANFL site, and you can click onto a link to get a grand final up on YouTube. And he got it up and I said, son, I'll show you one of the great marks in a grand final you will ever see. And I was, you, you won the ball on the half forward flank. It was just me and Clayton in the goal square. Yep. James West was to the side. Should have let him fly, but I reckon in the background I saw myself go like that. <laughs> JC, put it up. There's and 45. I, and, and I did put it up. 676, you put it up yeah. the, the pipe of the chimney. And I flew, I did, I flew, yeah. I was, I, I flew. And I think the ABC reporter Robbie Popplestone yeah. was the ABC reporter. Then he oh, interviewed yeah. me immediately after the game. He said, gee, Robbie, you were high. And I said, mm. yes, I was. I was high enough to see the 2,000 Port fans leaving. <laughs> and, and I was high. I was about as high as two, <laughs> possibly three latte glasses <laughs> in hindsight. But um, yeah. I think it was great. I, I, one of those moments. It was yeah, my first overhead mark, Charles, in my 14-year history. Yeah. Lord, was my first overhead mark. And did you finish it off? Yes, I did. Yeah, you yes, did, did too. Straight and what, what did Jimmy West say to the poor old Port Adelaide bloke that you jumped on? I think it was, it was young Clayton. Clayton. It was young Clayton right. in his first year. And mm. I landed on the ground yeah. on because I was high. I yeah. actually winded myself, broke a kidney, a rib. Because <laughs> I was high, Jars, when yeah. I come down. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was smiling because Jimmy West was coming at yeah. me. He said, look straight into Clayton's eyes and said to Clayton, mm. you are the unluckiest footballer yeah. in the history of the game. That bloke has never taken an overhead yeah. mark. And I laughed at that mm. comment but anyway no, it, it, was right. it was a great day yes we, we certainly did rub it into the port uh, players and supporters on that day jazz um your memories of that year it was an amazing year uh, in terms of the record of the team um similar mm. to the the team this year in terms of win win loss record uh, what you, what's your uh, reflections on that season because it was was an amazing performance oh look we were i thought our pre-season gave us a real uh, kick start to the season i thought we trained very hard we were very very fit and uh, and I, and I thought that we had the personnel, we had some good old experienced players, but we had some very good young, uh, young talented players. And Damien Obst uh, coming to the club gave us some real leg speed and, and Jimmy Tyson on the wing there. And, and our back line was settled and tough and hard. And I thought we were physically a lot stronger than most of the clubs. And don't forget Port Adelaide had come into the competition, didn't they, in 97? So, um, you know, there were some weaker sides at that time, but end of the day, you know, we were playing some brutal football and you can see some similarities there to the, the current squad of today, but I just knew every time we walked into the change rooms, there was always a feeling and a real confidence that uh, we'll win today. And, and that's hard to, it's hard to develop and buy that culture. 
I'd go back to the 96 prelim loss where Scotty Hodges kicked that goal. Mm. And I remember being in the rooms after that. And I knew we all looked at each other in the eye. And we said that will never, ever, ever happen yeah. again. An opportunity will yeah. never, ever be lost. And Jerry Dantokia, Macca, myself, James West, the senior guys, we all said that will never, ever happen again. And, and, and look, luckily for us, it did. No, not luckily. We worked hard. We no, had a big pre-season. Giles is right. I think we only lost two games. Mm. But we had talent. I remember the state team that year. 14 of us made record, record. Team. record. Yeah. And that will never happen again. 14 Nord players mm. played state football that year. And who did we play? Canberra and Smashman. <laughs> Tough and, opposition. And, and, and mind you, uh, I didn't play on that state side either. Because we I was injured. Right? So there's 15. Well, yeah, that would have been 15. Yeah. But I never forget that state trip. And we can share this now to oh. our Nord listeners. But Canberra, it's a little bit free willing. Like yeah. she can go into a, um, a dirty magazine Alexa. store and get dirty. Oh, magazine. right. Yeah. I, I now know where you're going. You know what I mean? At Canberra, you can, you can go into yeah. a, uh, a firecracker store and get firecrackers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Jar's got the. Um, Shippy credit card of the SNFL <laughs> and got a thousand dollars worth of fry crackers <laughs> and two dollars worth of dirty magazines. Oh, we went and sat on the side of this is the, the night before the game oh, and he's let off a thousand dollars worth of fry crackers <laughs> and there was a Prime Minister back. Whose phone's that? <laughs> <laughs> said, well, turn, turn, turn it off. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's the Canberra shop. They're, they're looking for they're, they're looking for their fire crackers. Yeah. Anyway, one of them come down in the Premier's car and we've all done the yeah. bolt back to the hotel. <laughs> Great memories. I ended up with one up my well, the post-match celebrations are sometimes the you know some of the great memories of the grand final. '97, yeah. there were some great moments oh, after the game. I have to ring you back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. It's very important interview. Here. It's going well. '97, <laughs> I can remember the celebrations, Jars. It was a moment where I think Aaron Keating fired up his um, Harley Davidson yeah. in the club room, yes, wasn't it? Did, yeah. I think you y- young fella, you had to you yeah, got yeah, taken yeah, away. Yeah, Was that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Young Keating uh, nearly lost his life because uh, I had a 4B2 in the back of my pocket. Mm. And um, a young lad was uh, an asthmatic. And uh, Keats, uh, you know, obviously won a premiership with the Adelaide Crows and didn't one fire kick, a shot. One mark, one hand. And he won a premiership with our guys one and kick, didn't, mark, didn't fire hand. a shot. So he strutting <laughs> around. had a big week. No, good <laughs> fella, mate. He's a lovely great guy. fella, Keats. Yeah. We love Keats. He yeah. strutting around town with two medals and uh, he decided yeah. to bring his Harley into our into our social club uh, that day and he uh, started revving the, the tyres and yeah. next minute it was like <laughs> towering ferno. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my little lad was... <laughs> and I thought, right, I'm going to punch him right in the mouth there. The other funny uh, moment I remember was uh, at the old coal. I think um, Ian Snogger Downsborough let off the uh, fire extinguisher and, yeah. and yeah. turned the whole old coal pub into a um, frosty snowman event. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I think Ro- Ro- uh, Rody had trouble getting out the door that night too. You think he fell over the coach at the time? Well, I don't know what's the best medal is. Best on ground, which you got in the grand final, yeah. and, and rightly so. Is that the Jack Odie? Yes. Jack Odie yeah. medalist was you, JC. Yeah. Thanks for that, Rory. And, and, Thanks and for that. can I just say, a great to have done your knee, to come back yeah. and to play and to perform like you did, for, for me, is one of the great grand final moments for me. I just and I'll ha- on that, I have to say, your support, for me, that year was you two. Well, you do, you two were certainly ones before. to back me in, yeah. so I appreciate yeah. that because that got me over the line at the selection committee. Well, I can well, tell you. No, well, I remember Macca coming to. Co- I don't know whether he came. You might have done to no, him. He said, me. "JC wants to play." And I said, "Mate, if he's training well and he can do well in the twos, he plays. Mm. You pick your best talent." Mm. He did anyway. You, 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 you go on about that for hours. Yeah. No, you can, but you were fantastic. Now, where was I going with that? No, uh, you were talking about uh, the post game. Um, Peter Road. Oh no! So you won the you won the Jack Odie medal. Yeah, but medal. BOG off the ground. I mean, Glenn Malloy yes. needs to be acknowledged yeah. for, and, and I think should we stand and salute? No, no. Uh, but well, that's only for oh, that's Sir, Sir Anthony Harvey. Yeah. Sir Anthony Harvey. But little gee, Mole how, Did he get? I think it was 15 consecutive days he wore his premiership jumper. <laughs> oh, oh. brush his teeth, wipe his bum, anything. <laughs> For 15 days. <laughs> anyway, as we move to this this we can side, cut, we can cut that this current side not. this year, though, Ro, you've seen a lot of, you've been in the States, like, you've seen a lot of Nord, seen a lot of SNFL. Um, obviously, Nord are going in as favourites. Can we, you know, can we be confident that they, they, they are the favourites that they're going to take it out this year? Yeah, the Nord Footy Club, in my opinion, have got two hands on the club. I, I called the second semi final, and the way Westies played, not taking on the zone, you know, chipping it in the back half, not, you know, mm. really taking it to, and I guess their selection as well not playing Nelson that second Ruckman um, was a worry but, but but they need to improve a great deal I know they were good against North Adelaide but Norwood's pressure 18 men on that field pressing up well drilled well coached I think there is there is well coached and drilled a team in the SANFL as I've ever seen and that's four yeah, I'd agree with that now, now forget 
Forget score lines and attractiveness and all that. It doesn't matter. They've lost two games for the year. One by a point and the other by, I think, about 12. So they are fantastic. Um, they've got to bring that again on Sunday. And I'm confident they can. But you have a look at their midfield in Suckling and, you know, Cash has been fantastic. zorzi has been yeah, magnificent. Exactly. Weber, you know, Gallagher on the outside. You mm. know, they don't need to win, right? Mm. We did now, day, but mm. they don't have to. They can still win stoppage mm. and score yeah. from stoppage. So I think they're good things, but I don't want to put a karma bus on them. Jars, um, to lose. And Jars, you know, Freddie Bassett's done an amazing job. You've watched him play at the Crows, watched his career, watched him develop into a, a fantastic coach. Your thoughts on, on Freddie and his future and, and, and the work he's done uh, with Norwood over the last three years? Well, he's done an outstanding job because not only has he got the, uh, the A grade uh, playing some uh, consistent uh, winning football, he's got the reserves playing finals football, he's got the under 18s playing finals football, and the 16s playing fo finals football. So to me, his message has gone right through the whole program, and, and that's a that's a good sign for a senior coach. Look, he's going to be judged on win losses in finals, and I know we lost one two years ago. They bombed out last year. They regrouped, and you've got to consider the injuries he's missing this year. Some quality players are not playing this year. His club captain hasn't been playing, uh, Bryce Campbell. He didn't play a game. An outstanding, you know, for well, me. Eagle retired to start of the season. Yep, yeah, a good call by Eagle on the retire. But at the end of the day. Uh, Bassett's got a massive future ahead of him and he, he knows that and we know that because what he's put in place has been consistent and it is working. He will be judged at five o'clock on Sunday if he can win a premiership and that's all that matters. Well, that's all it comes down to. Now you've both been coaches in your own right so to finish off I just want, just so, just give me something like you're there in the rooms, the boys, just give us a little one liner of, you, of what you think the message should be as you take it out. Way you go Rowan. What a rant! Because they don't do rant, that anymore. You can rant, you can I don't think they no. do that anymore. Well, let's do go they? rant. You know, you know, let's it, reminisce. It, it's all about hugging and kissing and like, here's your role and, and yeah, this is what you do stuff, and a lot of like, you know, you know, blood brother yeah, stuff. Come on, blood brother yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, this is all Link I would up. say. This Link is all up. I'd say. Get the around last, him. The last time Westies were in a grand final, there was a bloodbath Correct. underneath the old scoreboard. Correct. They went the thump. Yeah. My message would be: if all else fails, go the biff. Just go. You have to win. Yep. It's, win it's all, all or nothing, guys. Yep. Just whatever you have to do. It's a grand yep. final. Yep. Go the, go no the tomorrow. Yeah, no. Okay, go to the Biff Jars. No, look, for me, once the uh, the boys cross that white line, they're not only representing uh, each other and they'll they'll build that bond for the rest of their life, but they're representing the Norwood Football Club. They're representing the volunteers, the support staff, the supporters who have backed them in through thick and thin. And for me, it's just about making sure that everyone puts their head in the hole and uh, win the contested ball and just really, really play with some real spirit and passion and enjoy the moment because it goes so quick and before you know it, you can't go back and look back and go, oh, I wish I should have I should have hit the ball harder. There is no looking back, boys. It's just uh, two hours of just com contested, brutal, severe, skillful, entertaining football and that's what I want to see Sunday. Go the red legs. Thanks, boys. Well, there you go. It's two hours of, of, of your short part of your life, but it can last forever. And I think, yep. boys, we sit here today, 15 years later, still can sit down and reminisce about Absolutely. our time. And we're very thankful for that. And all we can do is wish all the boys the best for the weekend and, and hope that luck, uh, come Sunday at 5 o'clock, there's uh, 21 new premiership players that we can, uh, we can celebrate Absolutely. with. Thanks, boys. Thanks for your time. Good on you, boys.